Welcome to Health Oddity, the show that strips away the jargon and hype surrounding all things health and fitness to help you live a long, strong and energetic life. Lining up at the bar this week, here's Peter Lant, Paul Bassett and James St. Pierre. Hello and welcome to the Health Oddity podcast, episode 81. We hope you have enjoyed the last three weeks. We've had three uh, fantastic guests uh, over the last three weeks. Uh, Mr. Keith Smith, uh, we've had Mr. Steve Cotter, and then we've also had uh, Mr. Ben Morris over the last three weeks. Uh, and we have some great guests coming up. We have some very uh, strong uh, female real role model guests coming up over the next few weeks. Next week, we will be uh, with uh, Tina Morin from uh, Nia New York or Brooklyn, I think she's, she's in. Uh, so we'll be with Tina next week. Uh, and we've got some other great guests lined up over the next few weeks. But today we are going to go back to a, uh, some questions that we've had sent into us from uh, listeners. Uh, and uh, Pete, Paul and myself will do our very best to answer the questions uh, in as much uh, detail where possible or where they're slightly more broad uh, to give our opinions and have a conversation around them. But before I do that, can I just welcome the usual hosts of health oddity uh mr peter lance how are you doing uh I'm, I'm very well thank you very much um yeah it's weird i've had i've had a couple of weeks where i haven't i don't seem to have done much and it's it's very odd no it's honestly it seems weird i don't seem to have been out walking as much as i usually do and all of that sort of stuff so it's just i don't know it, everything feels a bit a bit strange at the moment. And I don't know, and I, but I can't put my finger on it. Why it is? Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Do you ever have those times when you're just like everything doesn't feel like it's flowing like it should? Hmm. Um, but it also doesn't feel like there's anything different either. So it's it's very odd. It's very odd. But you know, I'm looking forward to as we record this. I've just realised it's a, it's it's next week, isn't it? When when uh, David's coming over. Yeah, so, you'll be down next weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's yeah, it's honestly, it's very odd at the moment. I'm, I'm kind of, it's almost like I'm waiting for something to happen that, but I don't know what it is. It's weird. It's very odd. Well, the, the, the way you've just answered that, it, it, if we fast forward to the end of the show, there's a question we're going to end on. And uh, the kind of things you've just been describing there are, are one of the things that I that I most admire about you, but we'll come to that later. Okay, <laughs> oh, thank right. you very much. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, Mr. Paul Bassett, how are you doing? It sounds very existential that Peter's dealing with. Some... <laughs> Maybe like you're in a Jim Carrey movie and nothing's real. Yes. Yeah. The, Tr the Truman Show. Yeah. I might watch that actually. I love that film. Yeah. Good the film. Truman Show. Maybe hey, on. far enough. I'll just look out the window and see if I can see a big face of Ed Harris looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did you walk a hundred miles in one direction or did you just go in a circle? It was in a circle. Yeah, well, that tells you everything, doesn't it? If it you does, yeah. Straight, you might yeah. have gone through the wall. Yeah. My thinking behind that was I would be this close to home and walk, and, and, and it was the monotony of it. That was yeah. that, and, and it was COVID, so I couldn't go anywhere. But the thing of that was, I was just thinking, just, like, well, right, I want to, it's, it's seeing if, seeing if I, the mental aspect of doing that. Because I've I've done a, a long walk straight line before from one place to another, and you've just got to get there, right? So the mental aspect of that is I can't give up because I've got to get there. Whereas this was I could give up at any time. So yeah. Well, there's anyway, crazy races, isn't there? There's ultra marathons, twenty four hours where they just run a four hundred meter track. Mm. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. That know? must be mad. Like, and they have tent they have tents in the middle of the track, don't they? And they can just. Yeah jump off the track and lay down for half an hour and get back up and go back out and do it again. And yeah. Speed they go for 24 hours, it's like seven minute miles. It's crazy. Mm. No, it's crazy. I haven't done anything like that. I've just kind of done my usual thing. Speed I don't like think I've ever done a seven long. minute mile. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from in the okay. car. So the, um, <laughs> you, James, you get quiet. Oh, well, people don't normally ask me how I no, am, do they? Know. No. <laughs> we'll say no now, we, we, don't, we don't really care, to be honest. Let's move on. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good. But I was just going to say thank you. We had, we had quite a few um, comments and messages sent in to thank us or to 
you know, to, to say that people really enjoyed the episode um, from a couple, well, it's a couple of weeks ago now um, with Keith Smith. So it was really nice to hear from, uh, from Jim Hatcher, to hear from Chris Denning, to hear from Paul Field. Uh, several people uh, in the gym came up and spoke to me about the episode and said they really enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah, that, that we got some really positive uh, feedback uh, on that episode, which was great. The reason I say that episode, that's the last one that aired when we're recording this one. So the Steve Cotter uh, and Ben Morris hasn't gone out yet. So they are fantastic episodes as well, but we haven't had any feedback on them yet because they haven't been heard. Uh, right, we're going to go to first question, uh, which is from Paul, um, which was, what are your five non-negotiable things for a strong and healthy life? So this can be things, obviously, that you do yourself, uh, and they probably will be things you do yourself and things you would also recommend to clients and people who you uh, who you work with. So um, what are your five non-negotiable things for a strong and healthy life? If we first of all go to uh, Mr. Peter Lant and see what you have to say. I mean, some of some of these things will probably overlap um, with the three of us, but we'll uh, we'll kind of go around and see what we come up with. Well, do you want us to do all five or we're doing one at a time and then? See what happens. Do all five. If we've five. all got the same five, we... <laughs> I bet you we haven't. Okay, right. Because okay. I've, I've thought about this a bit differently, right? Because there's going to be like strength training and things like that, right? I hold them very dear, but that's kind of, that's, uh, it's not the obvious thing, but there's, there's other things to do before that, if you know what I mean. To get, it's about, uh, um, Keith might have been talking about this. I know like a few, a few people have spoke about this and it's, setting yourself up to be ready to to go towards something we'll talk about that later with goals and stuff as well but you know you can set a goal and then go right i'm ready to go but you're not ready you've got to do you've got to get everything in order first so the two of the main things are sleep and walking but not sleepwalking which i used to do when i was younger but not not at the same time um but I try to get, you know, I try to go for eight hours a night. I get to bed by 10 o'clock. I get up at six o'clock in the morning most days. Um, and I go out walking a lot. I've got a spaniel who's nearly three years old. We go out and do, you know, um, I, I think I'm, I'm probably doing about 60 miles a week at the moment, which is a lot, but I, I really enjoy it. So, mm. you know, I'm not doing it because I, I'm, because I have to sort of thing. I'm doing it because I want to. Um so those are two things, um, which we which order will I do these in? So learning, I like like learning stuff, just keeping my brain taken over. And Steve Cotter was talking about this uh, two weeks ago, of everything that you've learned in the past, you just it could be wrong. So you've got to go and find out for yourself. You know, he's he's kind of self educated, which obviously you've got to. If you're going to go and educate yourself, you've got to work, you've got to make sure you're getting it from like, you know, you're getting information from legitimate sources, haven't you? So it's kind of like, it's a tricky one, that one in this day and age when you can go and find information anywhere. But I, I, that, that's, that's what I like to do. And also like, like Rubik cubes and stuff like that, maths problems, just, just, just things to keep my brain ticking over. Cause I don't want to, you know, I don't want my brain to um, atrophy, shall yeah. we say. Um, so there's that. And then, the last two, one's time time spent with loved ones, so friends and and family, like sp specifically, you know, Sean and 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 the boy over here, you know, those are the two things that are uh, the two beings that I spend most of my life with. I haven't got any kids, but those are the two things I spend most of my life with. So those are the the things that you know I need to work on, and you need to work on all relationships, but those are the ones that are like. You know, I have to have I have to have those, and they have to be spot on. Mm -hmm. And if they're ever not, um, it needs to be sorted, nipped in the bud, because mm -hmm. I've been on the wrong end of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and also, it's weird because I talk about I've talked about this before. The being I spend most time with is the dog. <laughs> I spend more time with him than I spend with Sean. It's weird, mm -hmm. but anyway. Um, and then the last one is fun like doing things for fun because I think when you get to a certain age and this certainly happened to me, I was like, what do I do for fun anymore? I don't know. And I, I didn't do anything. I basically worked um, when I had a proper job, which I go about sometimes, but I used to go to work, finish work, come home, eat, 
watch telly, go to bed, and then at the weekend, I'd drink my way through it until Monday and then do it all again. So there was just no, like, the fun bit was, like, drinking, which, as we know, like, that doesn't end well. So, yeah, things like, you know, booking things like going to concerts and gigs, I've just booked something today, just doing little bits and pieces here and there, just, like, things for fun, thinking, what am I going to do for fun? And scheduling it in as well, because if you go, oh, I should do this, you end up not doing it, whereas we'll go right to it, like, like, Booking stuff um, at venues or whatever is it, like it goes in the diary and you've got to go. So those are my. It might be slightly different to the way you might think or people might have thought we would come at this, but I wanted to come at it from that different way because if you've got all those in place, you know you can it it things like that. I think keep you feeling um, less overwhelmed about the other stuff that you have to do. So if you schedule that stuff into your lifestyle, your lifestyle becomes easier. Mm-hmm. Um, and I say that from experience. I don't, I'm not saying that's going to be the same for everybody, but like what Dave Whitley was saying, he talks about things from his own experience. And this is from my own experience from, from being um, bogged down at work to having the lifestyle I have now, which is enjoyable, <laughs> which is lovely. So just to recap your five, just in sort of one or two words, what were they again? Uh, so sleep. Yeah. Walking. Learning or just, just keeping the brain going, mm-hmm. keeping the brain active. Um, time spent with loved ones and fun. Brilliant. I'm not saying time spent with loved ones isn't fun. But you know, but it yeah. it's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. So that's five five really good uh, kind of lifestyle practices, kind of habits, things to focus on, which is which is fantastic. Um, Paul, what about yourself? Well, your previous life sounds much like mine without the drinking. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> those, those split shifts do kill me, but um, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I think uh, I don't want to kind of, there's going to be some overlap to a degree. Um, you know, um, so, I mean, we just get out of the way. Certainly without doubt, if I'm frustrated, if I'm busy or if I've uh, got social engagement or whatever it is, I, I do have to put some block of time for me to train just to release my my mind because otherwise I'm working and um still very enjoyable to train it's, there are times when I don't want to do it but there's but I but I know I need to do it so that that, that is always a non-negotiable I think I have to say that um mm. but also for, on, on the flip on, on a kind of partner to that is is the kids being active as well that's certainly a non-negotiable in our week because it's it's quite easy because we're we don't have any family in the area to um to rely on the uh on the digital nanny you know the tv or anything like that so you know we try and at the weekends, I'll take them out to Wimbledon Common. We'll go for a good hour, two hours, getting them out there walking. You know, even the two-year-old now is pretty good at walking. Um, and they'll do a lot of physical activity, lots of just different things. And they and it's non-negotiable, I think, for, their, for them to see me active and my wife active. Um, and, to, you know, so they'll see my wife doing her yoga and some, some of the strength exercises in the mornings. And, you know, I've got my 100 press-ups I do a day, which, is, you know, whenever they're walking around me, I'm suddenly on the floor doing... <laughs> 10 press-ups or whatever so no but they're always seeing us doing something you know that's this to do with well-being we try and talk in that way as well talk about like how they practice things so if, i think a lot of non-negotiable stuff is to get, get myself into a mindset where i'm talking about uh, practicing things and learning things uh, very much like what peter said about how you have to have that open mind you have to be you have to be a student a lot of the time in order to stay fresh and Certainly, there's a lot of areas in my life where I'm, I still have quite a thirst for learning. Mm. Um, and I, it doesn't matter how, how long my hours are or how tired I am or whatever. Actually, I find quite a lot of uh, respite in doing that. Um, also, uh, so I usually I'll have a bath in the evening and I'll be doing a lot of kind of like just general kind of, you know, you've got a great thing about phone or a book or whatever. Just read a book. Look at I'm looking at all kinds of videos from from like business ones through to, to workout ones also steven seagal videos about uh, people watching steven seagal video uh, films <laughs> and realizing how bad every single Stephen. it's great it's just like this weird subculture of people who watch steven seagal films you spoke um, about this almost, last week it sounds like you've got a real thing against steven seagal 
<laughs> oh, I think he's I think he's just an absolute egotist, but it's brilliant to watch him, you know. It's just <laughs> he, he he sounds like you know, he always writes himself out as a navy seal or like some kind of messiah. So um, but yeah, you know, just just kind of trying to expand my mind. Uh, outside the Steven Seagal videos. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, that sounds like you're trying to narrow it a bit. <laughs> I'm trying to narrow it, yeah, yeah. It's, well, the thing is, isn't it really easy? I mean, it, it, we, can say, we can sound a bit high, high and mighty, saying, well, we've got all this learning and stuff. But, you know, um, and I was listening to the Knees Over Toes guy, and he, he's a great, you know, he's got such great ideas. But, you know, he, he's, one of the reasons I think he's very productive is he's cut out all entertainment from his life. Yeah, I heard, I heard that. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. yeah. Um, knees Over Toes guy, you know, spent two years um, trying to remove all entertainment and distractions from his life, and that's great. And and, and a lot, and some people might be able to sustain that. Uh, and it's you know, he's obviously uh, has the capacity to do it. You know, he he, he enjoys those kind of things. But it, it, I, I'm sure all of you find things which are mind numbing that you quite enjoy. You know, or whether it's watching something on a youtube video or just being something silly that just clears your mind um otherwise it's quite easy just to think um that we we spend all our time in self-betterment but sometimes it is watching videos on youtube that are kind of weird and pointless um you know so uh, but having that time to yourself and trying to carve out that time i think should be a non-negotiable it's something i struggle with it's something that I have as a kind of an ideal. It's like, okay, I need to make some more time for me to be creative and to think. Yeah, I've got I've got two two guitars on the wall, which I, I'm just not using. It's been um, um, it's been a few years since I spent a lot of time using my bass guitar, and uh, I've just focused on other things. But it, it's difficult to carve out that time. Um, and I and I realise I think that I've spent a lot of time just zoning out, which it has its value, and I quite enjoy it. But it you know, trying to trying to make a bit more time to be creative and create that creative space. I think that's a, a non-negotiable. And creative space is difficult because it sometimes create. You need to create some. I, I do very well in a bit of silence, a bit like sitting down at least a couple of hours a week, just in a coffee shop with whether my laptop's open or a, or a notepad and just coming up with creative ideas. Because otherwise, I'm just in the midst of doing things all the time. I'm just doing admin or doing classes or doing this that and the other and kind of trying to create that space um is is a non-negotiable but it's not always easy um whether i do three hours a week of it or two hours a week i try to get some of it in um i think that's really important i don't think that's five um but uh, I, those are the ones off the top of my head okay cool so that was more uh we'll just recap broadly what you just you know just if you can sum up that what you've just said in, in, you know, into the two or three points that you used there. One was uh, certainly um, sort of almost like downtime or relaxation time or entertainment time or fun time almost. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, uh, well, the first one was, 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 was obviously training. The other one was, yeah. was, was setting a good example for the kids and making sure that they're really active. That's definitely non-negotiable. I'm always trying to be present in that. Uh, another time is to, uh, is creative space. Mm. A creative space where the mind can just breathe which mm. is very easy um so there was that downtime where we spend a bit of time just zoning out mm. uh, and it's easy to do that because it's very passive uh, mm. but 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 creating that creative space of that hour where you actually are active but at the same time not doing things mm. it's quite <laughs> it's quite an abstract concept but 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 it certainly uh, needs to play a role in my week in some mm. capacity, whether it's a couple of hours or I can get multiple in. Mm. Excellent. I think for me then, I've probably uh, tackled it a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more, I suppose, sort of practically, you know, in terms of things that I do and the way I read something the other day that was, I shared it in my group. I think it was from James Clear and it said something along the lines of um, setting goals is, is, is all well and good. Um, but what actually moves you forwards is having sort of processes or systems in place that allow you to actually enact the kind of behaviors or habits that you need to, to make those goals happen. So just focusing on the end result um, doesn't actually get you anywhere. It's actually breaking it down into the daily. So, so I've got some sort of daily things that I make sure I do that that's been probably for about the last 14 months now. So the first one being sleep, making sure I'm in, uh, in bed uh, at the latest, <clears throat> uh, 10 p.m. every night, you know, 
and I'm asleep usually by 10 30 uh, to allow but that's based around working backwards to make sure I get um, seven hours sleep a night minimum uh, which I do um, increasing my water as much as possible so very straightforward things but again sort of aiming for two and a half to three liters a day walking which I know um, you know Pete's mentioned and Paul you mentioned as well I think just getting as many steps in as practical throughout the day I don't get anywhere near in as much as as Pete obviously um, but just when there is an opportunity to you know walk and pick the kids up from school or walk into town or something like that then I'll do that um, strength training as you've both mentioned as well uh, something that I think is really important that I do five days a week um, now and that's a non-negotiable uh, and then the other one being to, kind of trying to limit processed foods as much as I can so just just five straightforward kind of health and fitness related lifestyle practices so sleep seven hours a night water 2.5 to three liters a day walking i don't really count my steps but just as much as i as i can uh, throughout the day when the opportunity arises strength training uh five times a week and limiting processed foods as much as possible so hopefully you, we've, all three of us have kind of given you some slightly different things there um, hang, on, hang on i'll tell you what i like about three of those things you've mentioned don't yeah. take any time at all. So sleep and strength training are going to take up time, right? Because mm -hmm. they just are. Walking, people think, well, that takes up time. You just said, go and pick the kids up off sc from school. Da, da, da. You can. There's opportunities to walk throughout the day. Mm. Cutting out processed food, that doesn't take any time either. I mean, okay, you're going to have to make food from scratch and that, which does take, but there's quick recipes and there's ways around doing that of make of bulk making and putting stuff in the freezer mm. um and what was the fifth one uh, water, probably you're gonna say <laughs> oh yeah and drinking water i mean you know yeah. so three of those things non-negotiables don't take any time so there's no excuse not to do those really is there exactly and they just take just take a bit of planning really the one that takes the planning is the sleep you know but it's setting yeah. those parameters in place where if you give yourself a cut off um then it's you just stick to it you know which is great um, the next question, which kind of leads us on to, which was from Tara. Uh, and Tara, I'm going to read the question. Uh, she says, goals. There is a lot of emphasis put on goal setting. I struggle with this and I wonder if it's OK not to have a goal. I often feel that because I'm not striving to achieve something, that I'm not doing well enough with my training. I can deadlift 70 kilos, but I don't want to lift heavier than that. Is it okay to be happy where you are? Question mark. Discuss. Smiley face. So um, <laughs> <laughs> we've spoke about this before um, in various podcasts, I think. Uh, do one of you want to kind of kick off with, with what you would say to, if, you know, one of your clients, if you had this conversation with them, how, how would you discuss this? Um, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll. Paul didn't, Paul didn't, Paul wasn't fast enough there. Um, <laughs> the, well, do we need goals? I mean, it, it depends, doesn't it? Mm. If, if you're starting out, your goal could be, your goals could be just to, just to do something, just to, you know, do two sessions a week or whatever, one session a week, two sessions a week, whatever it is, go for a 10 minute walk a day or whatever it is. So Tara sounds like she's already quite, consistent in training and and all of that um so therefore not really because it, as long as you're enjoying it and you're going along and you're keeping fit and healthy then not necessarily you don't need a goal until there's something that you want to achieve and then you can set a goal for that right so and it's 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 kind of, it's, it's kind of like one of those things because she's like obviously saying i'm happy where i'm at and I can use myself as an example on this. I'm happy where I'm at, just, just training, what have you. And you will be until you're not, mm. right? So it's the getting comfortable thing. She's obviously comfortable in what she's doing and all of that, which is great. And at some point, may, it may or may not happen, and that may be it for, forever, and that's brilliant. But it, may get, it might get to some point where you're like, right, actually, do you know what? I've been doing this for a long time now. I want something different, which is what I did um, you know, I was getting stronger and stuff like that. And then it just, it, and then I was just maintaining where I was at for, for a couple of years. 
Um, which is why then I spoke to Paul and said, right, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to increase this and I want to, I want, well, I want you to help me. Mm. Um, and since then, I'm really glad I did that because a year down the line from that, I'm way stronger and it hasn't compromised my mobility and all the other stuff or my life. It hasn't compromised anything. So all them non-negotiables that we spoke about are still happening. Um, so yeah, the the answer is like like I say, it depends. You are from my opinion. The answer is it depends. You don't need a goal until such times as you decide that you're going to do something, and then you can set a goal for that. Mm. But there's no there's no problem with just just having fun for for a year or two years or three years or however long. Mm. So you know you're always happy until you're not, aren't you? Basically, that's that's how it goes. So as long as you're enjoying it, then yeah, keep doing it. And then if at some point if at some point you're not enjoying it anymore or you become less consistent or whatever, or, or another priority takes over, that's when, that's when you need that. Um, you need something to, to, to drive you on. Mm. That's what, that's what I would say. And then that's when a goal is required. So mm. not everybody, and we've spoke about this before because like Tara says, it can paralyze you. Cause you're like, I'm working towards this thing, but like, it's it it's it, it's not necessarily too hard, but it just takes up too much of my time or whatever, um, and then it becomes less enjoyable. So yeah, I'd say no, you don't need to have one, um, but it depends on it depends on the type of person you are. It depends on whether you're enjoying your training, you're being consistent, and all of that. Mm. So yeah, excellent. What do you reckon, James? Um, well, I was going to say I think we lost Paul. Paul's back with us now, though. Um, is. Paul's having a nightmare, isn't he? <laughs> you okay, Paul? I'm back again. You're back again. Uh, did you hear the question, Paul? Yeah, I did. Um, yeah. About uh, having a goal, yeah. Yeah, about if you have to have a goal uh, or or not. I mean, what do you, what would you if you if you had a client who came to you with this kind of question? What would the you know what would your advice be? What would the conversation be? Yeah, I think I think you know that's that's per perfectly legitimate thing. You know, to to not have a goal. Um, I mean, but I mean. I mean, you could always be slightly facetious and say, "Yeah, well, you actually have a goal, but it's it's probably be, be more consistent, be in a you know maintain, mm. um, change behaviour, something like that." Um, and and you could just just I think when it's when it's a situation like that, you just got to understand what they want from. So, so if they're working with me, then it's just having an understanding of what they actually want from what we do, which is. Could just be that look, I just need a bit of help, uh, just to stay on track. Um, I really enjoy being moving a lot. I really enjoy just taking time out of my day where I can focus on myself. Um, and if I make progress, it's great. I mean, I had one lady sit down with me. I said, "What's the goal?" I said, "Well, I just, I just want to bumble on a little faster than I am at the moment." Mm. And that was it. So she didn't have a specific thing. She just want. I mean, she's actually become really strong just by doing that. And, Actually, I think a lot of people who have that kind of mindset end up doing pretty well because they 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 just they just integrate it into their life, you know. I mean, it's I suppose it's no different than saying, "What's your goal for your children? What's your goal for your, yeah, for for today?" Or you know, "What's your goal for your life?" Or you know, I don't know. I just want to live a life that I'm happy with and I, mm. you know, this long and healthy, etc. And uh, so I I think. Um, Think immediately i just say that's fine it's cool yeah i think for, for lots of people that i kind of um train kind of you know general we, we use the term you know normal people general population uh people who aren't yeah, they're not competitive they're not competing at anything they're not sports people they're just after kind of lifestyle health and fitness um and a lot of these people may be maybe busy as well sometimes that the, almost the pressure of having to to have a goal that you're working towards and be very systematic and very focused and very driven can actually put a level of a level of kind of stress onto the whole the whole proceedings that doesn't need to be there i think you know it's um it's uh i mean i know working with paul at the moment and working towards what i'm trying to do when there's a time deadline in place it, it starts to get a bit stressful when you're trying to do something and you have to hit certain numbers by a certain time or 
you know, you may be trying, we've got, we've got certain members at the moment, there's the Chelmsford half marathon this Sunday, you know, and people are training for that and they've maybe got a time in their mind they want to get, and they're kind of getting towards the, the day. They're a bit, Oh, I don't know if I've done enough training. I don't know how I'm going to perform. I don't know if I've, you know, and, and it all becomes a little bit stressful and which is fine if that's what you want and that's what you're driven by. But I don't think that having to have, uh, you know, these, these hard and fast kind of goals is necessary but I'd probably even say the majority of people, you know, we're going back to what we spoke about with Keith the other, the other week, you know, it's, it's increasing frequency, it's increasing consistency and it's, you know, being fit and healthy and moving well. And, you know, all the things we've talked about before, you know, maybe getting more sleep, maybe eating less processed food, drinking more water, all these things are going to have a positive effect on you. And you don't necessarily need to train for a five minute snatch test or the tactical strength challenge or to do a twice body weight deadlift or so, you know, um, and I think a lot of that in the past was probably, you know, I was part of the problem with many people because when I first started, I really did, or not even when I first started, but, you know, a little while ago, I, up, up until fairly recently, I may have been really trying to push people towards having a goal, you know, because you always think, well, if you've got a goal, you'll be more motivated. But I think when you're working with people in their fifties, their sixties, their seventies, you know, it's all the stuff we've talked about before, isn't it? The goal is to, to enjoy going on a holiday and to be going out for, go out for a 10 mile walk and have a pub lunch and to play with your grandchildren and to all those kind of things, you know? So yeah, well, that, that, I, I, I thought I thought this when Paul was talking of 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 you know the the goal. You don't have to have like a, a concrete goal, but you need to know why you're training. Mm. What you're training for, and if it's just to be fit, healthy, live longer, play with the kids, play with the grandkids, whatever. That's 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 a goal, isn't it? Mm. And that's an ongoing goal that this time next year you can still move the same as you did this time last year, then mm. you're doing all right. <laughs> mm. you know? maybe, maybe part of it, you know, is the fact that someone has made, I think rather than thinking about the goal, it is to think about, am I a person making a decision in my own favour? Mm. And therefore, so rather than measuring your success by achievement of goals and results and stuff like that, maybe achieving but measuring your uh, success by your ability to make decisions at any given point. Um, and, and maybe one of the decisions in terms of what we do is, is a bit like um, if, if, you know, before there was motorways, before there was, um, you know, paths and stuff like roads or whatever, people used to use the waterways. And essentially you just needed to get your boat water and let the water take you downstream and it would take you to where you want to go. And it's mm -hmm. a bit like saying all I start working with Paul James or Peter and I know that I'll be taken downstream to where I want to be. And, and all I need to do is make the decision to get on board mm. and, then, and then, then let that process just unfold. And I'm just easy with that. And I just, mm. you know, like uh, you mentioned uh, and the, and the internet's been a bit in and out, but something about 70, 70 kilo deadlift. So if, if that person's already just seeing great results mm. then it means that they've made a great decision and they're being consistent and, and the mm. goal doesn't really matter because they're just on the journey on the mm. journey all that journey isn't it mm. and i think someone who we had on i can't remember who it, who it was but someone talked about how and uh, we i don't want to write people off once they get to sort of 50 60 70 but one of the members one of the guests sorry that we had on who i think was probably in their 60s themselves i can't remember the individual now but um said that actually when you do start getting older, like, and like I say, we have a number of people we train in their sixties and seventies now, slowing down the rate of decline is actually a positive, you know what I mean? Is a good thing rather than always striving for. So if you, if you can deadlift, if you're, if you're, if you can deadlift 70 kilos, 80 kilos, 90 kilos, and you just stick at that, but every year you can keep doing that when most people are declining, you know, as they get older, if you can, if you can maintain where you're at and, and reduce halt or slow that rate of decline, then you're doing good things for yourself as well. Um, Cause that's, think, that's absolutely it. Cause people say like, Oh, I can't do what I used to do cause I'm getting old. And it's like, yeah, but it doesn't mean you have to mm. give up mm. because it was Dan. I think it was Dan John who meant who, who talked yeah. about this yeah. and he was, he, and it was basically like, yeah, you will decline. 
but you can slow, yeah, but you can mm. just mean make make sure you don't decline by the time you're 70. Mm. You know, your decline might be by the time you're 90. You can put yeah. it off for 20 years. So yeah. Because I mean, we've got, you know, Edith who I trained for, for years, you know, she's getting she's in her 60s, she's getting stronger, stronger. Yeah. Stronger, you know what I mean? So people can do that if they're target driven and goal driven and want to do that. But I don't think it's uh, like anything. It's it's like when we had the, the episode with Dave Whitley, you know, it's it's setting goals that are aligned to who you want to be and not feeling like you have to set goals to please, you know, your trainer, your, you know, the other people around you is, is doing what's right for you, isn't it? So- well, that's why, that's why I know you had another question a while ago, hmm. which we might get to in another episode, but it was about training standards and they can hold, they can, they can make people feel um, inadequate, inadequate. Yeah. Because, you know, there'll be these training standards for the, here's what you should be able to do as a, as a bloke in your thirties. And here's what you should be able to do as a, as a woman in your forties or fifties. And here's what you should be able to, and it's like, well, I can't do that. So mm. does that mean I'm not good enough? And it's like, no. And some of them are like, some of them are really hard, mm. <laughs> you know, and then others are like, well, I can do that and I can do that. So, but they're, they're kind of in, maybe he's, not imposed, but they're kicking around on the internet here and there, aren't you? And you can, and you might stumble across them and think, well, oh, I'm not doing well enough. And it's like, it doesn't matter because they're not, they don't mean anything. To, In many ways, if, it's, if, like, if, well, um, it's like people who, you know, maybe we, we've all had it, I know, where people will come to you and say, you know, I weigh this much, but I should weigh this much because my BMI is 27. And it should be under 25. So yeah, I need to be here, you know, and it's kind of a um uh, arbitrary kind of number that's 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 there that if mm. you're not there you feel like a failure or that you you know you're not good enough in some way um and, well steve cotter said as well didn't he when we asked him about um what he has what his training looks like and what he has in it and mm. how he decides what to put in and what to take out and he was like he doesn't care if he can lift something off a bench and it, it he can lift more weight next week and then the week after and the week after if it doesn't like if it doesn't make him move better if it doesn't make him faster like the fight or flight thing that he was talking about if it doesn't add to that hmm. then it doesn't matter so if she, if if Tara can lift 70 kilos in a deadlift but she can still move well and hmm. you know and and touch her toes and all of that sort of stuff then you know it doesn't and, and if she adds more to the bar and it's going to take away from that Mm. or not change that then what mm. it doesn't really matter <laughs> yeah no that's yeah. that's good so hopefully that's um that's, that's that's a good 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 conversation around that um i think uh right the next question comes from uh my brother uh edward who listens to the podcast every week and um and one of the things he said now just to give a little bit of background um and this is this is something where we can really sort of strip right back and know that we are talking to an absolute uh, beginner. Um, and I'll say, bless him, he tried to, uh, he started doing some training recently. <laughs> and I shouldn't laugh, sorry, Ed, if you're listening. Um, he, oh. he, had, he, had, he, he, was, he had a dumbbell and he'd, and he'd finished doing, I think, and I think he was doing some curls or doing something with this dumbbell at home. And he put the dumbbell on a chair and the dumbbell rolled off the chair and landed on his foot and broke his foot. Oh, <laughs> no. Started with the best intention. So what, oh. what happened? Anyway, sorry. He, so uh, I wouldn't laugh if it was anyone else, but he, he's my brother, so I know. I <laughs> yeah, if someone, I know someone I did that in your gym, as the gym owner, meant to be like, duty you care? Yeah. And I was like, ah! <laughs> Oh dear me, look at that. Anyway, so what he did was he's gone along. Um, he's not uh he's a very intelligent chap, family guy, you know, good career, all that sort of stuff, but wanted to become more active and physical. Went along and joined the local um leisure center, swimming pool, that sort of thing. And uh, and he's been swimming, which is fantastic. And then he decided that he wanted to start using the gym. Uh, at the swimming pool in the leisure centre, and he went up there, and I think he might have had an induction and a show round and that sort of thing, like you would like you would do normally. Um, and he just feels a bit lost. So there's lots of machines up there. He just probably, and it's like what Keith said uh, when Keith was on a few weeks ago. 
when he said most people coming into a gym will train, I think the numbers he used was 1.2 to 1.4 times a week. And if you're really lucky, they'll stick at it and they'll start doing it maybe twice a week. You know, so that is the the average um, person who will use a gym or a health club or a leisure center. You know, it's between one and two times a week. So that's what we need to kind of to kind of work out and, and look at. Um, and sometimes when we talk about things and we're used to training, you know, three, four, five times a week, we need to remember that the vast majority of people, it's one to two times a week. So he's gone into the gym and there's lots of equipment, lots of mainly machine weights, which is fine. There's a place for, for machine weights and things in, in the world. And, um, and he asked me and I said, well, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about it on the podcast because then it will help more people. So I'm sure there's more people out there as well who it would help. Um, and he said, if I'm going to use these machines, so if you think about things, maybe like a leg press, like a leg extension, leg curl, chest press, shoulder press, lat pull down, these sort of machines, um, what is the best set and rep range to start with for him in terms of how many sets and how many reps and how does he gauge how hard he needs to work for general like i say for general health and fitness he's probably going to be doing it once to twice a week um what would you guys say to someone in that in that situation assume that they know how to use the machine safely um and they've been shown how to do that by an instructor at the, at the leisure center and whatever What's a good place to start in terms of numbers of sets and number of reps and how to gauge what weight to use for each exercise? What would you guys say? Did you, did you, tell, did you say which uh, exercises they were? No, I just kind of said just to have a general, you know, if you think maybe like a chest press, a shoulder press, a lat pull down, a leg press, you know, uh, you know standard sort of gym machines. But yeah, you can, you can include that if you want, Paul, and say maybe to to move towards certain exercises primarily over others if you want yeah well i think if he if he's being consi- i mean if you take it as a given that he's going to be in on average over the course of a month five or six times mm-hmm. uh, then we could work with that if it was completely intermittent then then you're probably just going to go in and just do how see how you feel on the day you know and if they're machines and they're probably going to be fairly safe to push yourself on um but i would always say when it comes to pushing yourself, it should be on the lighter side until you're very experienced and you can just push um, with higher reps. I mean, what we do on the, uh, on the A12, um, which is a great kind of technique is, is um, we go to a very soft maximum and a soft maximum is that you've got plenty of reps in the tank left over, maybe four or five reps where your form is really good and you could just push, on a very light weight on your final set say say for example you did you, you didn't want to do too many exercises so you did five uh, five or six sets and um you know on, on that last set you you just went for as many reps as you could so you gave yourself you know four sets of 10 and then on your final set you do max reps mm. um if you you know you could you could you could do that and then every week add two and a half kilos and see where you go until eventually if you're if you're mat if you struggle to hit the minimum of 10 reps then you could maybe move into a different way of programming but i think um i think it's quite good to have some element where you can push yourself as hard mm. as you can in a safe way without without injuring yourself i don't think you would injure yourself on any mm. of those those machines mm. so um, just sort of to paraphrase what you said you think maybe three to four sets of 10 yeah with a weight with a weight that you can you can complete all reps in sets all reps pretty easy yeah yeah say if you're doing four sets of 10 yeah. you can complete all the reps for four sets of 10 but on the last set if you feel you can do more you might push to you know 12 15 reps something like that or until you feel yeah you want to stop so, so, so a good a good thing i give my clients quite a lot uh, because a lot of my clients only have a certain amount of time to train uh, mm. And when I train people remotely, I, I might give them a super, a super set of exercises. But say I, we're doing bicep curls. So like every guy knows bicep curl. It's mm. good for both men and women. Um, and it's quite simple to do. Mm. Um, so, you know, obviously you've got to do it fairly strict. I like, I like to do them against the wall so they can be pretty strict. Mm. And you would do your, your, your prescribed number of sets. Let's say we did five sets and we did four sets of 10 with a very light weight. That light weight, four sets of 10, super easy. Then that fifth set, you can really let rip and just go mm. for a max out. 
Mm. And the next week you add two and a half kilos, you do four sets of 10 and go for a max out. Mm. And you just slowly over time, just push and push and push. Mm. And eventually your max set will come in line with your, your sets of 10, mm. you know? Um, mm. And it's a good way of just getting a bit of pump and keeping it safe and just starting easy, knowing mm. that you've got an opportunity to let rip at the end of it. Because otherwise what happens is you get guys that come in, they pick the heaviest weight straight away because it gives them a pump. And then the following week, they try and do it a little bit heavier and they've already started heavy and they've got nowhere to go. Mm. Um, so I think one of the main things, if we were giving advice to, you know, specifically my brother and then other people similar, um, is, to, is to kind of check your ego and not, yeah. you're not going in there trying to lift heavy. You're going in there with, something in mind whether it be three sets of 10 or four sets of 10 and you're using you're picking a weight that you can complete all of those repetitions you're not aiming to so i think so many people aim to just go to fatigue till they can't physically do any more yeah um and especially when they're new they're going to be very very sore for for potentially yeah. for days afterwards aren't they um for, for, from doing that so here's a, here's a workout plan, really simple. Three exercises. Say you did bench, the chest press, the shoulder press, and a, and a leg press. Mm. And you just did exactly the same programming. For, I mean, this is like just so easy to do. Same programming for each one. Four sets of 10, fifth set, max reps on every single one of those. Mm. And at each week you're in, you add two and a half kilos and you're always maxing out. And that gives you really simple. Mm. You know, rather than saying, okay, we've got to do a five rep max and then we've got to do a calculation of 50% mm. and blah, before you know it. And you're using exactly the same weight for all five sets, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It, saves, it saves, yeah, yeah. Same progression for, same uh, sets and reps for each workout, mm. you know? You're doing five sets on each one, three exercises. Every week you progress, you just add more weight. Mm. No, that's good. What do you I don't know if it's optimal, but it would work. Yeah, um, exactly. And it's what well, it's what we said with Keith, wasn't it? It doesn't it, it doesn't matter if it's not the best program in the world, but you do it twice a week versus the best program in the world that you do once a month, the uh the the the, the first one's better, you know. So yeah. without a doubt. Um anything you'd like to add to that, Pete? Well I I had something else written down, which is something it's very similar. Mm -hmm. Um but I'm not going to say what it is because it'll just confuse everyone, right? So Paul, what Paul said is a good way, right? So try that. And if it doesn't work, come back and ask us again and we'll give you another way, right? Mm. Um, but what I would say is definitely, yeah, definitely start out on the lighter side than, than heavy. Okay, mm. so if he, like what Paul says, if, if the max reps at the end, you can only do one more than you were doing with all, like on the, all the other stuff, then it's too heavy. Mm. Um, and also be mindful that you want like you want some left in the tank at the end. Like you're going to do the max reps at the end, but you don't want to be burnt out because no. you've got a job, you've got kids, you've got other things to do, right? You need, you've got life to do as well. So you don't want this to get in the way of life. There is that, but also, um, and there's disputes behind this of which, like whether it's a thing anymore and, and what have you. I saw Eric Cressy did a video on this. Um, but for, for a total beginner, this is a good way to think about it. Just match your pulls and pushes. Mm. So if you're doing a chest press, do some like lat pull downs or something like that. Or, or if you're doing, um, if, if basically, if you're, if you're watching, I'm doing push things. But if you're pressing bell, like um, something above your head or you're pressing it forwards from your chest, you want to be pulling back the other way or pulling down. Mm. Um, and the same with legs. If you're pressing something, you want to be lifting something to use your hamstring. So um, there's a, um, a there's a two session a week program with yeah. what Paul said, that rep scheme with, I don't know, four exercises, two pulls and two pushes. Mm. And that's it. It's perfect. Um, and and uh, that's... I reckon if you did that, you get really strong. You yeah, know, you get the beginner gains. You get you know, for two months, you'd see great progression. And Absolutely, just give you inspiration. You know, mm. and then after that, you can start to then think, right, hang on, am I am I into this or not? Because if you are, then you can start to look into it a bit further. But for for the for the for the the way to go is it, yeah, Paul's Paul's rep scheme and and just consider those things, and you'll you'll. You'll win. <laughs> everyone, everyone wins on that. Every beginner wins on that. 
Chris Zaremba does the same plan yeah. he did right at the beginning of his. Uh, he, he was shown a, a, a training system by a personal trainer in the States, and he still does variations of that. Yeah. Three years later. Because it, Another it thing I'll say is avoid, avoid doing what anyone in the gym tells you. Not like the, the trainers and stuff like that, like maybe, but there'll be people around who'll watch you and go, oh, that's too light, or... You know, come over and go. Oh, you can you can add more weight to that because you're making that look too easy. Just just don't just say no. It's fine. I've got it. Thanks. Mm. Thank them for the help and say no. <laughs> and then the other thing because that that'll say, inevitably happen as well. And then the other thing that I'd say is if and, and it's something that we have we have to say really is if you are gonna gonna do this, it probably is and it, and it's what we always say. I wouldn't try and fix my own car. You know, I wouldn't try and uh, you know fix my own electricity if I have problems in my house. I'd get someone in to, to do it who knows what they're doing. So we've given you some advice to start off with, which which will, which will uh, you know is a good place to start. But if you, it's something you want to do more and you maybe do want to say, well, actually, I'm going to try and do this twice a week, every week, then it probably will be worth um, you know investing, not a huge amount of money, but to get one of the trainers there um, either with the instructor or one of the trainers there to maybe spend a few sessions with you, helping you, showing you new stuff, writing you a program, you know, because we obviously can't mm. really tell you what to do. We don't know the equipment. We don't know exactly the layout. We're just giving you some broad brushstroke stuff. But, you know, yep. for the sake of, you know, potentially a couple of hundred pounds, you know, could be well spent, uh, you know, to, to move forwards, I think. In reality, Absolutely. though, you know, you've, got to, you've got to kind of, invent, I mean, still be around the bush. If you want a great result, if you want to be, sometimes you just need to invest a bit of time and money. So you either yeah. invest a lot of thinking and research into training yourself, or you you get someone else to help you set up that process. And you might only need them for three or four sessions, but it might just kickstart you, give you something to work with. Mm. But you, you know, if you, if you if you don't either invest a lot of time in your own you know own thinking, YouTube research, you know whatever or you don't do that, then you might end up just floating around and, and losing track. And mm. I, I can't really say that's a good route. Yeah, you know? no, totally agree. No, that's great. Well, hopefully that helps, though, Ed, to, uh, to get you started. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to wrap up with a final question, uh, which came from Fred, which, uh, <laughs> which is, what do you admire most about your two co-hosts? So, uh, who's going to kick us off with that? Silence. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the answer, Fred. I, mean, the answer. We're, we're, I like the way we're wrapping up with this. With like, we've got three minutes to, to get. <laughs> right, I'll go first. I'm going. I'll keep it fairly. You know, we'll keep it fairly light and fairly brief. <laughs> but I think. And this is what I made a little joke earlier because I think we've had a few we've had a few technical issues in this episode, and I think Pete's probably needed to do a bit of editing around things. But um, if you're not watching the vein on my forehead, it's like throbbing. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, Pete today has been more stressed than I've ever seen him in his life. But <laughs> the thing that I most admire about Pete is, and is the simplicity the apparent simplicity of his life <laughs> and the, the apparent uh, relaxed nature and control um, and boundaries that he's set around his life and the way he's set his life up to be is very, very, uh, you know, he's got a lot of time. He's got a lot of, uh, of time to go out walking. He's, he always sounds like he's got a very, uh, you know, Meet, meet, meet Sean in the pub on a Friday afternoon when she finishes work and has a pint and, you know, walks every day and trains and, and looks after himself and looks after the people he looks after, but seems to do it in a very, very organised um, way that doesn't seem to uh, involve a lot of stress and worry. Uh, so that's, that's my main thing uh, for Pete. For Paul, I would say is... Um, I think probably the amount, how well read he is and the, uh, the, the breadth of knowledge that he brings to a lot of the conversations that we have that goes outside of the scope of fitness and training and nutrition and, uh, you know, just generally very well read and generally very articulate and very intelligent and can bring, uh, you know, quotes from, you know, 
classic novels and you know classic tv and classic music and all the rest of it to the conversations which kind of enrich the conversations that we have um outside of the the apparent immediate scope of the conversation so so that's my two fred hopefully you've enjoyed that i'll pass on to the other two it's a polite way of saying that i have great ability of going off to random tangents <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every, every episode that would do would be about half an hour shorter if Paul wasn't. Right, I'll I'll go next because um, I'll start with Paul actually because James has just said uh, like articulate was a word I was waiting for you to say there because I think Paul's very good at, um, at explaining things. We'll talk about stuff and then he'll um, he'll say it again. With with fancier words, but that's understandable as well, which is like a good thing too. Notes, you know. But you're talking about like you know you come out with quotes and all that because you're very well read. But I mean, you worked in publishing, you've worked in the music industry, so you were talking about creativity earlier. You named this podcast because we were going to call it the Three Amigos or something <laughs> something around that. <laughs> we're Based on a Chevy Chase movie, that yeah, shows. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I, I think we'd, <laughs> even mocked, we'd even mocked up the three of our faces in the anyway. Um, you know, so you came up with that and then we went with the David Bowie thing and all that sort of stuff. So I think, you know, that is, that is brilliant. Um, uh, yeah, it's, I, I was going to say something else there as well, but I can't remember what it was because I, I came, we started talking about Chevy Chase. But there you go. Um, but with James, I think definitely the way you've started looking at stuff recently um as well and the way like you you said it earlier about how setting goals and you'd be all over that and all that you've been in the industry a long time and there's all of this stuff out there for someone in your position who's got a gym you know you've done very well and then people then start to go and try and coach other people to do that as well and do this and like be all over the shop and be like right now that i've set that up and it kind of i don't know if it runs itself or not but um you know, like the you, you seem to be stepping back from that to free for free your time up to spend with the kids and and with Steph and all that sort of stuff. That's great, but you're not then going right now. What can I put in? What can I put in place of that and then fill that time back up again? So that is brilliant because you can see it. You get to go to the pictures. Um, you know, you spend a lot of time with the kids. Um, obviously you get to go on holiday. You go on holiday with the people from the gym, the community you've set up. Um, you know, I, I see that. I just think that community that you've got around you is brilliant. So that's that's the biggest thing for me is, and, and you know, I've, I've seen you put posts out to say, if not like I will help you with your business and help you to get to six figures and all this. And if anyone listening to this doesn't know what I'm talking about. That's all over Facebook and everything for anyone in the fitness industry. Anyone in any, any industry, I think, make six figures in this and that, right? James could be easily be one of those people, like using his gym and going, look, look, and I could do this and blah, blah, blah. And he could easily like try and flog that. Um, but you don't. You put a post out and saying, if anyone wants to chat, if anyone's struggling, if anyone's new to the industry, if anyone wants to know anything, just get in touch and I'll, I, we can talk about it. So it's like using that time that you've freed up to, to give back, which is... You know, I think that's brilliant. Oh, thank you. Thank you anyway, uh, I'm going to go and get a box of tissues now. <laughs> <laughs> I start off with James. Um, yeah, well, what I love about J James, James and his approach is um, clarity of purpose and, and commitment to the kind of purity of the, of the art, the art of fitness. You know, um, we've got a great facility. I mean, it, it's been a, it's been a, you know, you know, I would love to have something. You know, ultimately, on the, on the scale and the uh, with the level of community and the interaction that you have and you've built, I mean, it goes back to what, what Pete said. You know, reaching out to other trainers who need help. You know, when I was first starting out, you were very, very kind to, to to find some time, sit down with me, uh, in a, in a coffee shop round from near your gym, and um, yeah, that was that was really great. And I so I still. I still think when I'm making decisions about how I run my gym and I think, well, what, what would James be doing? You know, or I take inspiration from, from your posts. I mean, the clarity of, of purpose that you have, and uh, it, it's, 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 a, it's a great model to, to, to work by. I mean, I think if there's anyone in Cheltenham, he's Chel Chel Chelmsford, sorry. 
<laughs> yeah, don't, um, don't go, don't, don't go to Cheltenham next weekend. Otherwise, you'll, <laughs> you'll miss David <laughs> Tio. <laughs> I came here for kettlebells. I've got his dogs or whatever. It is. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's. Uh, it, I don't know why they wouldn't train with you. To be fair, um, they'd be mad. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, so whenever I see a post or whatever, it's always well thought out. It's always you're always on the case with anything that's new. You're never behind the times. You're, you're in front of it, and you're. You know, you you're willing to test things out, which is which is great. It was great inspiration for your clients and for us as well. Um, it's one of the reasons we get such great guests. I think is because they can see how active you are and how you reach out. Uh, and then Peter, I mean, what I like about Peter is you're just your sheer honesty about every every aspect of how you do things. The fact that you are are willing to be um, uh, uh, completely open about what a journey looks like and what you've been through and what you. Uh, what you've had to encounter in order to 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 get where you are now which is you know which is by design you know a lot of people have aspirations and goals and it and 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 for me for me because I've got a lot that are going on at any one point and at times you can be feel crushed by it and so it's great to see how because I, I know that you've been through uh, a lot of stresses and stuff like that when you're making transitions into new roles or whether it's relationships or whether it's finances or whether it's just your work life balance as we talk about balance, but you know, you, you, you've, you've been an architect of your own life and very much empowered by it, particularly over the last five or six years, rather than being a victim to it. And you talk in very empowering language, which is quite inspirational mm -hmm. for me. And I'm no doubt it, it gets you clients, it gets your clients the results they want because, and that's why they're so loyal to you is because, you know, you walk the walk, you're honest about it and you're open as well um so that it's, it's fun to be around that you know excellent thank you so much guys thank you for everyone who and thank you to fred for that question uh and thank you to everyone else who who asked questions um today so uh, that was one, cool. i've not got one more that was we'll put out there that was oh yes about. yeah 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 so we also uh, had just, a question just try yeah. and get some some info on that yeah, well remembered, well remembered. Um, we did have a question that came in from Becca Johnson, um, and it was, I would like to cure, I would like a cure to cure hormonal eating. So if you can resolve that for me, I'd be eternally grateful. Now this was a, this is from Becca, who's, uh, who's the lady, a female, uh, asking about um, eating everything in sight one week of the month, LOL. Okay, so um, it was kind of, it's difficult. We're obviously three men in our 40s um, and it would be silly for me to try and give any advice whatsoever on that. But what we're going to do, we're going to kind of open that up and say, if there's anyone out there who, uh, you know, is a specialist or works with, with, with women uh, specifically and has dealt with this, or if you are a, uh, a woman who has these uh, cravings every month um, and you feel that it's kind of linked to your hormones and you almost feel powerless to, to do anything about that. But you have, uh, you know, learned how to deal with that, learned how to improve it, um, or you know someone who um, can help with us, help us with this question, then we would love to, to maybe have a chat and, uh, and, and maybe potentially have someone as a guest down the line. So thank you so much for asking the question, uh, Becca, but we are politely going to decline trying to wing it and answer it when we're going to kind of reach out to someone or, or other people who may um, be in a better place to answer it uh, properly for you. Okay, so thank you for that as well. So thanks to, uh, to Paul for your question. Thanks to um, Tara for your question. Thanks to Ed uh, and thanks to Fred and thanks to Becca as well. We will be back next week with uh, Tina Morin, who um, Steve, uh, Coach Fury, Hollander put us in touch with. So we should be back with Tina next week. We've also got um, Leone and uh, Michaela, I think, coming on uh, just following the following the Winter Olympics in a few weeks. They're competing at the moment out in Austria, I think. So I think we've got that lined up for April. Uh, we've got other guests lined up coming up. So we will speak to you all soon on that. Please do share, like, subscribe, leave a review if you're listening on a platform that allows you to do that. If you want to join the, uh, the Facebook group, 
just search groups and search health oddity and we will let you into the group that way and again thanks again to everyone who recently has given us some feedback on recent episodes just off the top of my head obviously chris denning um jim hatcher paul field I think Tara gave me feedback in person, Nikki, Steph, different people. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much to everyone for listening and we will be back with you next week. Goodbye. You've been listening to Health Odyssey with Peter Land, Paul Bassett and James St. Pierre. To get your regular fix of hype-free health, you can subscribe and leave a review wherever you get your favorite podcasts. You can find out more on today's and other topics at healthodyssey.com or find us on Facebook or Instagram by searching for Health Odyssey. 